and then I was able to walk on water. You know, everybody wants to have a testimony, but you must have a test in order to have a testimony. So I want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through, know that it is for God's glory. And I remember my kids, even to this day, I remember when I told them that I had cancer and had to have surgery. My oldest son just gave me the biggest hug ever. And then I really started appreciating life better. We never know how long we have, but we have to appreciate what we do. And take every day as if it's our last. And I want to encourage you tonight that be still. When things happen, it's okay to get out of shape. But refocus immediately on Jesus. And then you can move forward. So so that's the storm. We talked about the storm. You're going to be in a storm. We talked about the four anchors of the storm. But it all comes down to believing in God. We cannot please God until we do this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let's take a look at that one. We cannot please God until we do that. It says, but without faith, what is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. This diligent is important because a lot of us are just cursory seeking God. We have to be diligent. We have to make an effort to seek Him. And He'll show us great things that we don't know. Jeremiah 33, 3, that's what we quoted that before. You know, man often says, show me and then I will believe. I remember when Jesus Christ was on the cross, you remember? They were saying, come down. And now, men will believe that you are who you said you are. Doesn't work that way, does it? He said, believe me, and then I will show you. We have to believe first in God. And when we believe in God, He'll move on our behalf. Now, I want to encourage you with this. Um, the butts of God. What is anybody know what a conjunction is? Who take English classes? <laughs> we all do. <laughs> there you go. It joins two clauses together. They cannot be separated. Now, whenever humans use conjunctions, it's normally not good. It's normally not good. Well, I go by there, but I don't want to (laughs) go. Oh, man. I loan you this money, but I know I'm not going to get it back. (laughs) So they're never good. But whenever God uses a conjunction, He shows us a problem, and then He tells us His promise. Now, I want you to write these down, and I want you to study them this week. Because, man, I'm telling you, I was shouting on these right here. Let's take a look at Job chapter 13, 15. And, boy, I was here in 2006. You know, when Job, I read this thing many a time. And I'm like, what is Job talking about, the Lord slaying him? But, boy, I'm telling you, listen to this. It says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Gosh, why do we get bent out of shape when we're going through problems? We are a physical being, 
in a physical world, we're going to have physical problems. But we know the problem solver. God. Is it for His glory? Remember the four anchors. So Job said, even though God allowed this to come on me, I will trust Him. Because I know He loves me. The next one, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Goodness gracious, this one's good. We'll take some time on this one. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. I tell you, you should chew on this one the rest of the week here. It says, we are troubled on every side. I mean, you turn to the left, you turn to the right, you turn to the back. Trouble's everywhere. But look what he says. Yet, not distress. Why? Because I know he is in charge. The Bible says, 10,000 shall fall at your side and you shall not be harmed. So he's telling you, trouble's all around you. But be not distressed. Because he is in charge. Where is your faith? He asked the disciples, why are ye so fearful? He simply wants you to believe in him. He says, fear not, only believe. I tell you, I've been there many a time. You know, we gave you the acronym of fit for fear a few weeks ago. Fear can mean forget everything and run. Or face everything and rise. And you have the choice. Because it is. And I'm telling you, when you're running, you're counting on yourself. But when you're facing it, you're counting on Him. He says, for when I'm weak, then am I what? Strong. Turn it over to Him. So He says, when you, whenever your trouble's on every side, yet you're not going to be distressed. People say, man... You're going through all that stuff and you're just cool. Well, if you think about a storm, God gave us the perfect example. Think about a hurricane. That thing is spinning around and around, but what is in the center of the hurricane? The eye. And that eye has what? Calm. You ever think about that? Even in a tornado, everything's spinning around, but right in the center is peace. He tells us that this stuff is going to be around us. But we as Christians have to focus on Him. So whenever we're going through these things, yeah, we might get on our pity party, but don't stay long. And then focus on Him because people are seeing you. And then you're going to finally realize, do you have faith to believe that He'll take you all the way? Or are you just playing games? It's easy to serve God when there's no trouble. Anybody can do that. You're not doing anything. But when that test comes, I'm telling you, it's tough. I've been through it. Going through it. There's storms come and go. They're going to come up and they're going to go. But God is strengthening our faith. I'm going on here. It says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Perplexed. We don't know what's going on. I don't know what the Lord's doing. But you know what? I'm not going to be in despair. I will have hope. Not in me, but in Him. Are you going to be perplexed? Yeah, we're going to be complex. We don't know what God's doing. But as Job said, yet. He said, though He slay me, yet will I trust Him. Continue to trust in Him. Here we go. Boy, this is so true. Persecuted, but not Forsaken. If you live in this world and you serve the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the world is not going to like you. Look at Pat, Pat, Patrick McCorry. I'll tell you, I did vote for him. Yes, I did. He took a stand. But he was persecuted for that stand. Take a stand. He was persecuted. You will be persecuted. But guess what? He's not forsaken. God's not going to forget about him. So even though we're persecuted, God has not forgotten us. 
I tell you, that is good news. I tell you, so many things whenever you take a stand for Christ. But the good news. Here we go. I'm cast down, but not destroyed. I may be down, but I'm not out. You're still in the game. You're still in the fight. And God will raise you up to go on to fight another day. Satan may think he got you by the neck and his foot is on your throat. But God said you're not destroyed. You're coming up. He's going to raise you up. Because the Bible already told him in Genesis that we're going to tread upon his head. <laughs> so we are down and not destroyed. Here's another one. Psalms 34, 19. Psalms 34, 19. And I'm almost done. Oh, man. Good Lord. I'm telling you, I'm having a good time up here with this stuff. It says, many, not just one or two, many are the affliction of the righteous. Why us? Because we're in a world... This is not our home. We're ambassadors for Christ. We're foreigners here. Do you understand that? <laughs> I don't think we get that. But he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But listen to this. Here's that but. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Woo! Isn't that good? Amen. He delivered them out of all. Many of their affliction. We're going to go through a lot of stuff. But He will deliver us out of them all. Why? For His name's sake. You know, there's some say, I've been old, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor His seed begging bread. We don't have to worry about what the government's going to provide for us. Are you kidding me? He will take care of you. This is what I want to tell you. Now I want to encourage you with this one. Psalms 30 verse 5. And boy, I tell you, this is good. Psalms 30 verse 5. Boy, thank God for mercy. It says, For His anger endureth but a moment. Thank you! <laughs> Boy, I tell you, when we mess up, thank God, it only for a moment. But look at what he said. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So you should be excited if you're weeping right now. You know your joy is right around the corner. It's coming in the morning. You're going through all this stuff. Ruby got all these tests going on. She's weeping, but as you're weeping, may endure for the night. Amen. That joy is coming in the morning. Praise God. We can have confidence in Him that He will deliver us. So I wanted to encourage you with this short message tonight about peace. Be still. Know that God is in control. And whatever you're going through, He'll see you through. I want you to remember those anchors whenever you're going through a storm. And they were that God, I'm here by God's appointment. He knows about it. Do you know about it? <laughs> I'm in His keeping. He's going to keep me. If He brought me to it, He'll bring me through it. And then I'm under His training. What can I learn here to help somebody else? And then I'm here for His glory. I will give him the glory. People will come to you and ask you, how did you get through that? Even today they ask me, how did I get through what I went through? Because of Christ. And that wasn't for me, it was for him. He gets the glory, not me. I didn't do anything but trust him. So I want to encourage you with that. Anybody got any questions? We'll close out with that. All right, thank you tonight. Um, so if you would stand, we'll close out. Thank you. Father God, we come once again thanking you for your word tonight. Lord God, we pray that your people take your word and study your word even more this week and understand the promises that you have bestowed upon us. 
Lord God, I just thank you because you've just been so good to all of us. And Lord God, we just ask.